This was uh, released. Uh, many of you are probably not my age. I'm not older than dirt, but uh, just after the earth cooled. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> there was an event that happened in Waco, Texas. There was a little religious group called the Branch Davidians, and uh, they kind of had a little compound with a chain link fence around it. And they had men, women, and children, families growing up there, peaceful people, shopped in town in Waco and kind of kept to themselves, played some rock and roll Christian music, and were living their own lives. It turns out that a certain high-ranking person in Washington, D.C. did not like the fact that they were doing this and wanted to take them down. So they ordered the Justice Department to go after them. And go after them is exactly what they did. Now, unfortunately, the fact that they were going after them meant that they were going to use all the forces at their disposal. They attacked them. This occurred, this attack where 76 Americans in 1993 were burned to death, including 21 children and two pregnant women. And it happened on live TV and I watched it. What many people do not know is it was not Janet Reno, then Attorney General, that was responsible for this. Oh, she's the one that ordered the attack. But it was actually First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton who pressured Deputy White House Counsel Vince Foster and Webb Hubble. You know who Webb Hubble is, don't you? He's the father of Chelsea Clinton. Oh, you don't believe me. Just look at their pictures side by side. You deny it, okay? I don't need 23 and Me to tell me what a daughter looks like from a father, okay? Then uh, <clears throat> Webb Hubble to use military force in resolving the Waco standoff due to the saturated media covering the standoff the standoff was receiving. And here's why. Because at the time, Hillary Rodham Clinton as First Lady, was leading an illegal effort to establish an overreaching health care plan, which the world called Hillary Care. She needed the press, but Waco was getting all the airtime. She wanted it gone. Appearing on CNN's Larry King Live, White House aide Linda Tripp suggested that Deputy White House Counsel Vince Foster and Mrs. Clinton's direction transmitted the order to move on the Branch Davidian compound, which culminated in burning the occupants to death on live television, including men, women, and children. Janet Reno begged her aides, begged them, shortly before the orders were issued in the final assault, please Give me a reason not to do this. 85 Branch Davidians were burned alive in that attack. 76 of them died. Tripp's allegations lend weight to charges made previously by Special Forces expert and Waco investigator Steve Barry, who claimed Hillary Clinton set up a special crisis center in the White House to deal with Waco, serving with her was Vince Foster, who, according to his widow, was subsequently fueled by horror at the carnage at Waco for which the White House had ultimately been responsible. Evidently, Vince Foster responded to this horror that he felt on his heart by committing suicide. It is a terrible, terrible thing. Well, in the 1999 documentary, Waco, a new revel revelation from former House Waco investigator T. March Bell, he recalled, and I quote, One of the interesting things that happen in an investigation is that you get anonymous phone calls. We, in fact, received anonymous phone calls from Justice Department managers and attorneys who believed that pressure was placed on Janet Reno by Webb Hubble. Pressure that came from the First Lady of the United States. Foster himself was found dead from a gunshot wound to the back of the head in a Virginia park three months later. Could he have known too much about Waco? And by the way, it's very strange, but photographs of Vince Foster turned up a few months ago. We talked about it here on X Squared Radio. 
where there was not one bullet hole behind the ear of Vince Foster, there were two. One in the neck, a small caliber bullet, and one behind the ear, a thirty-eight caliber bullet. And then his body was dropped in the park. The park police called it suicide, and nothing, nothing was ever done about it. Journalist Ambrose Evans Pritchard maintains that Foster had been drafting a letter involving Waco on the very day of his death. Moreover, Evans Pritchard said that Foster kept a Waco file in a locked cabinet that was off limits to everyone, including his secretary. Except that the instant that Vince Foster was killed, they raced to his office, unlocked his door, broke open that filing cabinet, and emptied it of all its records. That's before the FBI could get there. Prior to Waco, Foster was a dignified, decent, caring, smart man, said Linda Tripp in his in its aftermath. Vince was falling apart. How would you feel if you had 76 deaths of innocent people on you? Tripp was with the former White House deputy counsel when the news about Waco broke on television. Here's what she said. I was with him, meaning Vince Foster. Well, we had CNN all the time, not to plug, but it was always on in the White House. And a special bulletin came on showing the atrocity at Waco and the children and his face, his whole body slumped and his face turned white and he was absolutely crushed knowing, knowing the part he had played and he had played the part at Mrs. Clinton's direction. There was a marked contrast between Foster's heartfelt emotion to the Waco tragedy and Hillary Clinton's. You would think that raising more than $1 billion in influence peddling and high-profit charity services would be enough. You would think that ordering the slaughter of 76 innocent Americans just so you could get the news headline back for your health care plan would be enough. As Hillary Clinton heads out of the Democratic National Convention to hit the general election campaign trail today, allegations of Clinton Foundation corruption are alive and well. And one writer is urging Americans across the country to help hold the Clintons accountable. That is ongoing. Dr. Jerome Corsi is an investigative reporter for World Net Daily and the author most recently of Partners in Crime, the Clinton scheme to monetize the White House for personal profit. His book comes more than a year after Peter Schweitzer's Clinton cash. Corsi told World Net Daily and Radio America his efforts to shut down the Clinton Foundation have a much simpler focus. What I'm maintaining is there is a much easier offense to go after. And that's what's called inurement. Inurement is a criminal offense, and it means you run a charity for your own benefit, Corsi explained. We just watched Congresswoman Corrine Brown go to jail for this. He said that it is much easier to prove than the kinds of corruption alleged by Schweitzer. You don't need a quid pro pro, he said. You just show the financial reporting is so apparently fraudulent and so masking of money that you know went through the corporation because the United Nations reports more than they gave to the Clinton Foundation reports they got. Where did the additional missing money go? I bet you can match it up with their personal bank accounts or their offshore accounts. Of course, he said the Clinton Foundation inurement began after the Clintons turned a foundation designed to raise money for Bill Clinton's presidential library. You remember that, don't you? After leaving the White House, the Clintons used the foundation for disaster relief in places like India and Haiti. Corsi said Bill Clinton would travel to the scenes of disaster, pose with the survivors, smile, make a short speech, and he would raise hundreds of millions of dollars for the relief effort. And then spend just a tiny fraction on the stated mission, maybe 10%, money gets ripped off in this grifter scheme and enriches the Clintons to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. And they've never held a job in their lives except for the Clinton Foundation. Where did they get all this money 
except to rip it out of the foundation. All of that is ongoing, and uh, we're watching the results of the conventions, and nothing could be more white and black, more night and day, more good and evil. It's really quite amazing to watch. And what is even more amazing and more frustrating for you and for me is to watch the mainstream media and their collusion and their propaganda and the way that they uh, strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Well, as it turns out, there's more, much more 